Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. Today's review is Black Sight for Delta Green, the role-playing game, by Arc Dream Publishing. In this video I'll be covering the third scenario in the book, The Last Equation. Ok, first a bit of history. The Last Equation was originally released in 2010 as a free download for the old Delta Green supplement, and was revamped and updated in 2018 as a 24-page softback scenario for Delta Green, the role-playing game, and later collected in this volume. There'll be spoilers from this point, so stop watching now if you intend to play this. First up is the introduction. Here we are introduced to Fascius Clauden, a 16th century mathematician, sage and astronomer who is well travelled in his short life. He published six books on astronomy and mathematics, with his seventh on the subject of cosmology, Libri Pluris Admiratio, or Book of Many Wonders. Despite being remembered as a minor inventor, he is best remembered for the Laqueus Equation. Rendered six days before his death, it is regarded in some circles as either an epiphany or complete gibberish, with 500 years passing without it being solved by the world's most brilliant mathematicians until now. A mathematics graduate student, Michael Way, has successfully cracked the equation by discovering a cipher embedded in the last book. He has discovered a complex formula which renders reality down to mathematical simplicity never before seen, a reduction of the entirety of existence through prime numbers, revealing a vast reality behind the mathematics. Way passed his discovery onto a private mathematics mailing list just before the true horror of what he had found out had settled into his consciousness. Four hours later, he drove to Teenack, New Jersey, purchased ammo for a stolen shotgun, then entered the home of Dina and Malcolm Ridgeway and murdered them with their six children, killing the last of them out on the street in front of witnesses. Before police arrived, he spray-painted a sequence of numbers on the pavement, then shot himself in the face. There are no clues, no motive, and no connection between the Ridgeways and Way. This is where Delta Green entered the equation. When the report reaches the National Crime Database, the sequence of numbers triggers an alert as a possible paranormal event. The numbers have been seen on various occasions and are high on containment protocol lists. Within an hour, a team is assembled and on its way to New Jersey. Oddly, when Delta Green reaches out to the agents, they are asked about their expertise in physics and mathematics, with those who were skilled in it being overlooked this time round. Eventually, the players should join the investigation in an official capacity under the FBI, although they can come under the eyes of the investigation's commander and risk exposure if they're not careful. Here we have a briefing of Operation Iapetus, which details exactly what the agents are expected to do. It gives us details on how the programme provides the agents with proper paperwork and ID, and also talks about a friendly that they have on the inside, Trooper Thomas Blanett. A 22-year veteran, Blanett will assist the agents however he can, but will fall short of crossing certain lines like falsifying evidence, murder or abductions. He has access to most files on the case, including crime scene photos, and will treat any unnatural threat by the book. We have details on what the agents should probably do on arrival, and then it launches into the first event. If the agents are officially placed on the case, they will be ambushed by a local news star, Enrico Save, who attempts to make one of them the face of the investigation, which could cause problems for those that are trying to act incognito. The next part details the characters of importance in the investigation. First up is Supervisory Special Agent Aidan Kaner, a 15-year FBI veteran who places trust in his team as long as they go above and beyond for him. If the players try to recruit him to Delta Green, he will make a career of uncovering them and bringing them to justice. There's Special Agent William Gant, whose eyes look too close together making him look stupid, but who is actually very good at his job. Delta Green is a viable option here as some of his superiors in Quantico are operatives and he will jump at the chance if he is given it. Next, there is Dr. Sarah Comox, a crypto analyst for the FBI. She has a double PhD in mathematics and cryptography, and upon having access to the sequence, will realise in a short time what Way has done. We have a five day timeline for when she finds out the horrible truth, tracking each day, including if she is interrupted, to day five when she burns down Shaver and Sons, a small stock trading firm in Manhattan. Sharp investigators will discover that their phone number is almost an exact match to part of the Laqueous solution. It also details Police Chief Upton Weeks a man who is fairly nondescript until he's put in front of the press, where he seems to have the knack for saying the right thing, and there's also details for the aforementioned trooper Thomas Blanet. Finally, we have Enrico Save, who seems to have the ability to be in three places at once due to his producer and cameraman being so on the ball. Next, we have details on the Ridgeway crime scene. Here, we have many examples of the Laqueous solution numbers. The clock is stopped at 22813, which is part of the equation. There were 16 numbers in the solution, and there were 16 shots fired. Everything about the Ridgeways adds up to the numbers. If the agents investigate the shotgun, they get an even stranger set of circumstances. 
The gun is a Remington A70 police shotgun, which has a serial number containing the aqueous numbers, and it flags as still being in police possession, which is clearly not the case. The agents can investigate further and find the box that it's supposed to be in and find that it is missing. The problem arises when the police officer who was guarding the shotgun on delivery flat out denies that he left them for a moment. Further investigation will cause the officer to reveal that he left the car park that they were in for about five minutes when a dog that had run away from its owner was killed at the car park exit and he went to have a look. If the agents check the cameras, they witness events happening exactly as described, but also see Wei standing across the street checking his watch, waiting. A few seconds before the dog is hit, he crosses the road. As it's hit, he enters the car park, cracks open the box, steals a shotgun, then seals the case and is gone before the police ever even notice. The next route of investigation is Columbia University. Upon checking out Wei's dorm room, they discover a small, modest and messy place with a desk covered in piles of paper and scrawl, which can be identified as differential equations and an old computer. It's clear that he hardly spent any time here. Should the agents investigate his computer, they can see that his last email was sent to 12 mathematics students on his mailing list. This mail contains a complete, complex solution to the Laqueus equation. Investigating the papers yields some interesting results. The most recent reveal the exact date, time, latitude and longitude of the location of the shotgun, which is sanity draining upon discovery. They can also discover a photocopy of Libri Pluris Admiratio, which has some of Way's notes. If the agents perform any research on Fasius Clauden, they can find out what they would expect in a history book. Investigating the mailing list will tell agents where and who it was sent to. Looking into his family, life and work will produce nothing but shock and surprise. After this, we have the Laqueus solution itself. Once understood, the numbers seem to be everywhere, telling the victim to kill, burn and destroy seemingly random things. Agents who get to this point are lost and need to be dealt with by Delta Green. Three additional crime speeds are detailed, all recipients of Way's email. It gives information on how the agents could possibly stop one of these. Ultimately, the numbers need to be contained, as exposure to the solution causes them to spread. If Delta Green are asked by agents how to deal with the infected, they are told to remove the vector. Lastly, we have a resolution to the spread of the Laqueus equation. The remaining copies of Libri Pluris Admiratio can be found quite easily and destroyed, although the only original copy that remains is in Belgium. This is followed by game stats for the NPC. The last equation presents an enemy that is not like anything I've ever seen. The Laqueus solution is a thing of beauty, a solved mathematical problem that can mess with reality. It can't be attacked or destroyed as such, only contained. It's a frankly fantastic concept. I feel certain types of players would enjoy this immensely, and by certain types I mean those that like to think their way through a scenario as opposed to shooting. The initial removal of those that have skill in mathematics, while clearly the right decision for this scenario, would, I feel, make this much more difficult than usual, as understanding what is truly going on is half the fun here. Those agents that blindly fumble their way about the investigation without truly comprehending the ramifications are really missing out. As usual with Dennis Twiller's writing, it's really thorough. Most of what you would think to investigate is detailed, and the NPCs are nicely fleshed out. This is a superb scenario, one that I feel would serve well to introduce new players to the bleak world of Delta Green. I give it a very good 9 out of 10. Okay, that concludes part 3 of Black Sights. Part 4 in this series will be Lover in the Ice.